says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Uh, right before I would like to read this text, these verses from the New Living Translation, it reads as follows, as they continued onward towards Jerusalem, they reached the border between Galilee and Samaria, and they entered a vi village there. Ten lepers stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, sir, have mercy on us. You all ever been at the position where you had to say, Jesus, have mercy on me. He looked at them and said, go to the Jewish priest and show him that you are healed. And as they were going, their leprosy disappeared. One of them came back to Jesus shouting, glory to God, I'm healed. He fell flat on the ground in front of Jesus, face down within the dust, thanking him for what he had done. The man was a despised Samaritan. Jesus asked, did I, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the nine? Does only this foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. When Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priest, according to Levitical law from Leviticus 14, verse two, uh, the whole chapter of Leviticus tells about how to deal with lepers and that the leper in that day to be cleansed had to be brought unto the priest who was to judge whether he was healed yet uh, healed or not and to offer the, offer the offering there prescribed. There's an old proverb that says that the longest journey begins with the first step. Saints, for a few minutes today I would like to speak from the subject when God says go. When God says go. God ever said go to you and you didn't go? When God says go. He said, Jesus said, Sh go. Show yourselves to the priest. The Lord dropped into my spirit two powerful sets of words from this text. The first was go show yourselves to the priest. That caught my attention. And then what sent me over the edge was the statement as they went Saints, on the day I want to expound on how a go from God can bless your life. These lepers asked Jesus for mercy. Jesus then told them, go show yourselves to the priest. There were no guarantees. There, were, there was not a promise from Jesus of their healing. All that existed for these lepers was a command from the master to go. Well, say much like the lepers in this text, I believe that God has a go for so many of us. There are just times in each of our lives that the voice of God has been so clear and so distinct that it would have took a fool to miss it. And even with that type of clarity, we still didn't go. When God tells many of us to go, we procrastinate or we don't act on that which God, what we receive, the word we receive from God for a myriad of reasons. We consider our own resources. We consider our own low self-esteem. We consider our adverse backgrounds, or we, we will at the giant call fear that keeps holding us back from the lives that God has promised for each of us. Saints, when God says go, how many of y'all know, then we should go. I'm talking to somebody right there, one of these musicians right here behind me that God had told them to go. And they got a project, they got a CD, they got a something, but they ain't done nothing with it. And you didn't go. I'm, I'm not getting in anybody's Kool-Aid today, but I'm just saying we'd be at another place in life 
uh, I, I know we all have a thing for safety, but some of us would be at another place and another station of life if you said go. I, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I'm thinking of this text on yesterday, and the Lord dropped this into my spirit. Before you can ever went, you had to first go. God then dropped into my spirit that every as they went, as they went, had to be preceded first by a go. Saints, I think that our problem is when God says go, many of us just don't go. Saints, I will be especially candid and extremely honest, and I will admit to you that I have mishandled so many of God's goals in life. I allow fear. I allow what people might say and excuse after excuse from allowing me to take advantage of a goal, not from a man, I, I've, let, I've misused some goals from God, a goal that I received from God. God had already called me to stand on promises, but I chose to just sit on the premises. Saints of God, what have you done with the goals that you have received from God? Don't mishandle the goal that you receive from God. I believe that we live limited lives and we suffer too many common experiences because we don't trust God at his word. I can see I'm not moving on a go from others, but who, who can change on us in a New York minute? But how can not, we not act on a go from God that never changes? The Bible says that God's word won't return unto him void. The Bible also said that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. I'm going to turn a corner on you in just a second. You know, I know all this lecture, and they say, here you go with all this lecture and stuff, but I'm going to turn it on you, and you ain't going to even see it coming. Years ago, at the old Pentecostal Tabernacle Church in Nashville, Tennessee, which is pastored by the Bishop Jerry L. Maynard, I, I went to Nashville, and I preached a message titled, Our God is not a credit risk. Uh, Saints, it's as if we think that God has some credit charge-offs and some unpaid bills that we don't know of. I'm here to boldly tell you on this morning that our God has never filed chapter 13. Preach, Steve, I am. Our God has never filed a chapter 7. Why haven't you stepped out on the word that God gave you? Did you consider that if an all-seeing, listen to this, an all-seeing and all-knowing God told you to go, then it might make sense for you to go. Saints, our God never fails. When God says go, then make it your business to go. Will you move on a word from God? And here I'm now going to come down your street. God told you to apply for that job. God told you to apply for that house. God told you to apply for that car. But you allowed the fear of rejection to keep you in a limited lifestyle. When God says go, my brother and my sister in Christ, we have to go. These lepers were healed as they went. There was a tremendous power in the go that they received from God. Saints, I can't promise that you will make it anywhere meaningful on tomorrow. But I do know that if you don't weary in well-doing, that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I know that many saints are weak in the knees. That, that's going back to some of that R&B stuff. I, that's a Steve Harris, a weak in the knees. Y'all don't remember that. You gotta be an 80s or a 90s kid for that. But many saints are weak in the knees when it comes to acting on their faith. The book of James states that faith without works is dead. Saints, what have you stepped out on? Have you missed the as they went that God had planned for your life because you didn't go? Saints, these lepers were healed as they went. They went with no guarantees. They went just like they were. They didn't change clothes. They didn't wait to get a second opinion. They moved on the word that they received from God. Kim, I'm talking to you right now. I believe that this trying season that we find ourselves in, that God has a goal for so many of us, even when the coronavirus is roaming our streets. I believe that God has a goal for us while racial hostilities are boiling. I believe that God has a goal for us when inequity is ruling the day. When God says go, then we had better do what? No. Go. Saints, if we learn how to move swift, swiftly on the go from God, then we'll find ourselves in the blessed land of the as they went of God. 
Your bold steps of faith will land you jobs that you never thought you have. I'm believing that God has a Joshua 24 verse 13 moment for each of us if we ever learn to go. Joshua 24 13 states, and I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you built not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and the olive gardens which you planted not. Ye eat. Saints, God has so many things that he desires to put in your as they, as they went files. As you went, you have a new home. How many of y'all believing for a new home? Uh, anybody out there believing for a new home? As you went, as you went, God has healing for your body. Anybody believing for healing in this building today? As you went, God has a new car prepared for you. As you went, God has that godly companion ready to come your way. Ooh, I felt that one. Uh, uh, we, you tired of all this matchmaking, ain't you, and tricks? You got all these folks trying to set you up with their cousin's best friend and their cousin's brother and their cousin's cousin, cousin friend. I, I, I hate for my little guy's mother, Bill, I got to tell you, but I have guys that lose their wives. And, and, I, and it's the wildest things for when they lose their wife for about two weeks, they're going to have some peace. But after that two weeks, my little men that, that lose their wife, they are in trouble. I mean, they got to meet everybody's play sister, they uh, work sister, they co-worker, they partner, they best friend, because that's what, what, what happens here. But I'm just telling you, so many of us are believing God for things. I, I remember one time we were believing for a home, and Deborah went uh, to a thing they had at 95.7, and she actually went out, and she applied. I didn't have the faith to apply because I had too much sense to apply. And guess what? Every now and then when you put yourself out there, guess what? And trees, don't they say yes? Sometimes we're sitting down on our yes. God has already prepared a yes for you. He's prepared the new house. He's prepared the new car. I mean, I'm telling you that sometimes you got to go out on those Sundays and take a drive on the other side of town and see how folks on the other side of town live. God doesn't want you running from bell to bell and, and, and bad problem the bad problem I'm speaking a word to you right now that many of the times and many of the things that you haven't walked into is because you have forsook your goal when God says go he tells you to go without money without credit I don't care if your credit so tore up that your credit got cancer when God tells you to go how many of y'all know that you need to go I had a lady one time uh, she was applying for a car with me and uh, her mom was, I, I grew up, I came up in, actually, before Bishop Patterson, I was at New Azusa with uh, Sister Thomas and Elder Thomas. And uh, actually, we had her, and they came, and she came, We the lady applied for a car, and, and the finance manager of the dealership where I worked actually had a lighter, and he burned her credit bureau. He said, there's no reason to send this in. So the next day, her mama comes in, and her mama got a, got a word beep on the inside, Mother Bell. She says, Steve, where the car at? I said, don't do that. This my job. This my job. She said, where the car at? And of course, the car was on the showroom. So she went and put her hand on the car and went to quickening right in the showroom in front of everybody. And I was good and shamed, because they said, don't that lady go to your church? I said, yeah, well, 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 yeah, yeah, she does. And I every now and then, about 30 minutes later, the finance manager's trip and falling, he said they approved it. How many of y'all know that if you try, if you trust God with a go, now these folks were healed, they weren't promised anything. They said Jesus have mercy on us. He didn't say he was going to heal them. He didn't say he was going to bless them. He said, but he told them to go show yourselves unto the priest. I'm speaking this word prophetically to your life, right in the middle of a coronavirus, right in the middle of a racial tension being high, that God has a goal that he's about to trust you with. How many of y'all trust God with a goal right now? Saints of God, these lepers were healed as they went. God has some blessings that are ready to chase you down. 
as you're going to work, Mother Bell, God's sending healing. He's sending deliverance and he's sending freedom your way. When God says go, you had better go. God has so many great things uh, that are in a mad dash to catch up with you. You're not walking in victory yet, but it's coming for you. Much like the words of Mary at the wedding of Cana, we need to remember that whatsoever God tells us to do, we need to do it. Saints just do it. Saints just do it. I'm not talking about Nike, but I'm talking about telling you about when you get a go from God, then you better go. God sent these lepers to the priests who were healed as they went. You're thinking that you're losing the battle, but you don't know that you're in the middle of a as they went. You got blessings that are gaining on you. You're, you're one step ahead of a healing. You're one step ahead of a deliverance. You're one step ahead of what God's about to do in your life. And I'm telling you that God has a goal that he's about to bless your life with. Saints of God, I'm speaking that word with you. When God says go, you do what? Jesus was going to make the priest admit to, that these people were healed. Folks, when God really does a work in your life, I, I, I take it, I was just mentioning to somebody else that Bishop Patterson told us biblical healing like this. I'm glad I had a good teacher. He said that when you were healed, when the power of God moved on you and you were healed, that your doctor will confirm it. Folks, stop being scared to go to the doctor. If God's healed you, your doctor going to scratch his head. And he going to say, I don't know how this came about. But I know that you're healed. But you knew you were healed when you said, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. <laughs> and we didn't esteem him stricken, and spitting of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. Saints of God, I'm speaking this word to you. Uh, do you trust God to heal you? Do you trust God to heal you? God given you a goal that's going to help your sugar diabetes. He's given you a goal that'll help your hypertension. He's given you a goal that'll heal the coronavirus. He's given you a goal that'll help your arthritis. He's given you a goal that'll help your bursitis. He's given you a goal that'll help your Crohn's disease. He's given you a goal that'll deal with all the maladies that you got in your family. Saints of God, when God says go, you better go. You're wondering as if the hand of God is not upon your life. I'm here to prophesy to you that God's about to make some powerful people call your name. I spoke to a young lady who did well in business last month, and she did well. And she's fighting privilege because, you know, when we're in the workplace, we get to a certain corporate level. There's not people that look like us. There are people that do nothing and they get the great job because their uncle is the person that gives the job. And I said, you know what you do? You can't make nobody like you. You can't make nobody do it. But you can outwork privilege every day. And it hurts them more when they're forced to call your name. Because if you're the number one person in the business on that month, guess what they got to do? I'm telling you, say my name. Say my name. God's got some say my name. I know you knew on that job that you But God's got some people that's about to make you. They're going to have to say your name. Mother Bell, that God's about to do something. And they're going to have to say your name. I'm telling you, we're going to be blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed in our coming out. Blessed in the coming in. Say my name. Say my name. That God, God's about to take you higher. When God says go, we have to go. I see a moment coming. Where they're going to have to put some respect. On your name. Saints, let's stop robbing ourselves of greatness. We think that by doing nothing, that that keeps us safe. But the only safety that we ever discover is in the will of God. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings 
shall come on thee and overtake thee. I told you that blessings are about to gain on you. You got a seed in the ground. You don't leave some of this treasure. God's about to send you a blessing. That God got increase coming your way. That God got healing coming your way. That God going to bring your family back together. I'm telling you that it's coming. If you bold enough to go, believe God for your healing. You bold enough to go, believe God for your deliverance. Believe God to get your son straight. Believe that God to get your brother straight. That we believe that God will bring your family back together. Do you believe? Do I have any cords? Do I have any cords? But are you going to start standing on the promises? When God says go, are you bold enough to go? Are you ready to make a move? Are you about to let your faith walk your faith out? I'm telling you that God said go. He said bless thou shall be in the city. Bless thou shall be in the field. Bless thou shall be the fruit of thy body that you're chilling. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep, that shall be thy master. That basket is that tuning of birth. It's that drama in all the other persons. And they bless that store that God's going to bless your bank account. What you got in 1 Timothy 